You're listening to the A Bit From Within podcast with Felicia Marty. So that's why I think it's so important to try to take as much of being result oriented around manifestation out of it and instead really put yourself more in the process of the striving towards what you want. If you know what you want and you are clear about those things that you don't ever have to use the word manifestation or even intention setting, that you don't have to do rituals surrounding this kind of thing in order to see the fruition of your hard work. Hello there, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the A Bit From Within podcast. I am Felicia. Um, here with you sitting here, just trying to, I've been trying to ground myself down a little bit. It's still, well, it's almost noon as I'm recording this, but, um, I've had this kind of undercurrent of anxiety that's kind of been flowing through me since I woke up this morning and I'm just trying to breathe and use a lot of the tools that, um, I often talk about to help manage that. And, um, this past week has just been another one for the books. Um, A couple hours after I recorded last week's podcast, I recorded last Sunday. Um, And that night as I was sleeping, I started to feel like I was coming down with some stomach problems. And by the morning, um, I always check my Aura Ring app when I get up, just kind of see how I slept, what it kind of recommends for how I approach the day in terms of readiness and sleep quality and all of that. And it gave like this alert that was like, your body temperature is very elevated. Like, do you need to be resting? Like, are you sick? Um, and I had like a, it had indicated like a, a plus 2.2 fever um, from, and it doesn't tell you, it doesn't say like, you're running a hundred degree fever. It basically shows like your, whatever your baseline is usually, you're two degrees above that. Um And it was kind of funny because I actually, so I've had my aura ring for over a year now, and I honestly didn't know that it could go more than like plus one. Like I thought it could tell you like, hey, you're, you're way off the chart, but I didn't know it was going to be like, you're exactly like 2.2. And then as I came to find out in the subsequent days, I had one at the next night was like plus three. And the next night after that was also a plus three. Um, so needless to say, I became very sick on Sunday night and it lasted all the way through Wednesday and whatever I had, Dave also had. So we were both absolutely miserable, totally through a kink in all of last week. Um, and it was super disappointing because I had been working so hard to get ahead of, um, the schedule or of my work schedule because, Um, Dave and I are headed out of town this next weekend for a wedding um, in Chicago. And so I was like, I need, I just need to get ahead. I'll feel a lot better. I'll feel like I can devote my energy to other things if I can, you know, play catch up a little or not play catch up, but get ahead and not have to play catch up. And then poof, like all of that work I did to get ahead. I mean, it's good that I did it because I, I wasn't behind. That would have added even more stress while I was sick, but it's not fun to spend time doing nothing when you're sick, right? It's like when we think of how we want to be able to rest or spend time if we can't work, how do we want to be spending that time? It is not being sick in bed. Um, And it was a good reminder for me of that and how important it is to find balance and to use time away from the office or from the desk to really do things that are for your heart Um, and not just for maintaining your survival, right? Um, But yeah, last week, that obviously very unexpected took it out of both of us. Um, I recovered a lot more quickly than Dave did. Dave was probably sick all the way through Saturdays, like almost an entire week. Um, And it was hard. It was hard to take care of each other. And the other thing that was really, really hard is um, a lot of the symptoms we had. I I don't know if it was, I don't, 
actually I know like because we didn't end up going to the doctor like I don't know if it was influenza or if it was some kind of like stomach flu or um, what it was but some of the symptoms overlapped with possible COVID symptoms and so of course Monday morning right away I went and got a COVID test just in case because I've I've heard tons of information coming out recently about um, breakthroughs, people who are vaccinated, um, breakthrough cases, and I was concerned that that was the case and luckily found out um, a couple days later that it was not COVID, COVID was not detected, so that was a huge relief. But for those first, you know, two and a half days, I was sitting with a ton of worry about that, just you know, not from a sense of like, am I going to be going to the hospital? Am I going to die? You know, that that kind of thing, which I think could be a very um, normal worry with COVID if you're, especially if you're not vaccinated. Um, but more so just like, how am I going to manage what's coming up? And are there going to be any long-term um, effects? And how's my body going to deal with this? You know, just it is... We are living in a very unprecedented time. There, I pulled out the word from 2020. Like, we are living in an unprecedented time. And what is happening right now with the rise of cases in the United States with Delta, I am fully, like I'm saying it right now, I am fully buckling myself up for a major change in the way that we've been living since May. Um, I do expect that, like, we're going to be seeing masked events and and you know let's just take a deep breath right there because everybody has their right to feel the way they feel about it if you are over it if you are exhausted of it if you are desperate for it because you don't feel safe right now like everybody is going to feel different ways about it it just really sucks when we have taken all of our humanity out of this and we are instantly going political and our politicians have made decisions based on what's best for their politics and not not what's best for the people that they're governing over. Um, it's such a confusing and strange time and it's filled with extreme emotions um, because at the root of what's happening is like our, our safety, right? Like these These are, to me, first chakra issues around survival and safety. And that is what's being triggered right now. And it can trigger all of those other places in our life that have triggered these, this, our safety inside of us. Um, Times we felt like we were going to be abandoned. Times like we didn't feel like we were being cared for. Times we didn't feel like we were being seen. Times where we didn't feel like we had the tools. to take care of ourselves or to be safe or to have a stable environment or to be secure. These are really important things for our humanity to, to, to not to thrive, just to feel safe, just to be surviving well enough. So this is big stuff. Um, and Like I said, I'm really grateful that we didn't have that, but it did feel like a huge wake up call to me that's like, wow, I've just spent all of this energy worrying that it could be this breakthrough case and feeling very vulnerable working weddings once again. Um, Granted, I do have a whole wedding season under our belt from 2020, but we photographed mostly with restrictions for all of those, you know, where people were wearing masks and the events were mostly outside and things were, um, people were being very cautious and very safe and, um, the events were much smaller. You know, yesterday I had the pleasure of photographing a wedding that was a huge, big, wonderful event. And it was a mixture of indoor and outdoor. And it was still, it still crosses my mind though I'm like you know at what point is this gonna feel too big right now um with the numbers the way they are and it also it makes me feel like mentally just jumping into the future and having some sort of faith that like even if we have to backtrack and kind of revisit some of 
some some kinds of restrictions that it's not going to be that way forever like having this taste in um my body this year of what it was like to be unmasked back with people just kind of living quote unquote normally um it did fill me with enough hope and faith and um, I guess satisfied that need that I had had for so long for over a year of just feeling because this is ever going to get back to normal. It kind of felt so good just to fall back into that. So I guess all of that is just to say, I, I, I guess that's just a bit from within for sure. Um, my mind feels a little scrambly after having kind of navigated all of this and just to be at the the forefront of the next very, very busy part of um, my wedding season that we have coming up this fall is by far even bigger than what we've already done so far this year. And that is both intimidating and also unnerving, Um, just to be honest. Like, it feels very much like one of these moments where like I am sitting here, I'm kind of starting to like blink my eyes. It's August 9th today and I'm going to open my eyes and it'll be end of October. And from a business perspective, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to be in the middle of family portraits and we have to, and then the beginning of our booking season for 2022 and we have to figure out what we need to do with next year. And, you know, I already told you last week that I've been really trying to contemplate like the decisions and adjustments that I need to be making in my life come 2022. And it feels like it's all happening all at once. And so I do feel like it is my job right now to pump the brakes a little bit, to be in the moment as much as possible. Um, This is something that I always try to tell brides and grooms and their families like on on wedding days is like this day goes by so fast just be as present as you can be and I'm trying to remind myself that every single day because it is so easy to get swept up it is so easy to get swept up in the momentum in the um kind of compartmentalization of the entire week or an entire month and not and forget to live. And so I do feel like I am on the brink of just having to once again use all of the tools in my tool basket that I know will help me get through this being as organized as I can, trying to take as much off my plate as I can, having good boundaries, um hopefully got the sickness out of the way so I can just be able-bodied and able to focus on what's in front of me and also just trying to take a deep breath and remember like if there are areas of my life where I fall short it is okay I've been thinking about this quite a bit actually because I have always this like um, feeling of guilt that pops up um, around not being a good enough friend or not being available enough or, um, you know, like it's like we made plans with our really good friends and then we ended up being sick and so we had to cancel. And so in the back of my mind, I'm like, I need to get that rescheduled. I need to do this. I need to do that. And then I'm like, I'm already literally scrambling, trying to keep everything that is on my plate, like on the plate. So I time for some self-compassion and also just some realism of like, It is okay to be where you are. That's what I'm having to tell myself right now. And it's advice that I would so freely give to you, right? Like, it is okay to be where you are. You don't have to be the best friend and the best employee and the best daughter and the best um, cook and the best housekeeper and the best, right? Like, we don't, you don't have to do all of those things. Like, the people who know you and love you will understand. And if they don't or their feelings get hurt and they need to come to you and say like, hey, my feelings were hurt that you weren't able to be present or that we didn't reschedule our thing, that's totally valid. And they should be also be able to hear you tell them back like, I'm really sorry I hurt your feelings. I'm doing the best that I can and I didn't mean to hurt you. Like those are reasonable conversations to be had. And I just have been trying to remind myself that and really ground myself in all of this kind of self-talk right now 
to help me manage it all. And I guess I am trying to feel like that message is more than enough to share on a podcast this week. I know that so many of you out there are also going through this time of anxiety and this time of major stressors and having much more on your plate than is probably fair for any of us. And so this is more than we can, you know, ask ourselves is just to be gracious with ourselves, to be accepting of our own humanity and to make the adjustments that we need to in our life to protect ourselves first. Um, even if that means pulling back a little bit or rearranging things, like it is more than okay. And that is, um, kind of what I wanted to spend the majority of today's podcast really talking about is, um, realistic expectations around manifesting. So, Let me start by kind of transitioning into our astro check-in because over the weekend on 8-8 yesterday, we had a new moon that also lined up with, honestly, I had never heard of this before this year. And then as I started researching it, it seems like it's become a little bit more um, towards the forefront of uh, culture right now, this date on 8-8 called the Lion's Gate Portal. Now, obviously, this has been around for thousands of years because um, it has to do with the star Sirius. And as Sirius um, starts to rise throughout the summer months, it kind of comes to its peak on 8-8. And ancient civilizations said that when this happened, that there was um, this kind of transcendent wisdom kind of being imparted down into the earth. Like It's like a portal kind of opens, the Lion's Gate portal. And so this is a beautiful time. Um, eight is a a number in numerology for wealth, for power, for abundance, for um, a, a lot of success, honestly. And so having it on eight eight is kind of this idea of like your wishes can come true. Whatever you're trying to manifest, you can have. That's kind of been the language in the spiritual community around this new moon on eight eight. And new moons, you guys have heard me say this before, new moons are incredible times for setting intentions, um, for manifesting, right? It's the beginning of a lunar cycle. So I always think of, I picture a clock and I picture the new moon down at the bottom. So this dark moon, the sky is dark, it's a blank palette um, or a, a blank canvas, and we're going to start moving our way towards, you know, noon up like we're moving clockwise. So we're moving towards nine o'clock and then we'll move towards noon. And this idea of like, as we move and as we work, we set our intentions, we're getting more and more and more light. And then suddenly we're at this 12 o'clock point where it is now the full moon and all of this light is on our, um, whatever we've been working on, right? Like we're in a place of illumination. We're in this place where we can see things clearly, And then we start this two-week journey of moving it back into the darkness. Now, it's very interesting to work with these lunar cycles because I do think that in a lot of ways there is this natural energetic ebb and flow that really does move every two weeks. Two weeks of a new moon cycle, two weeks of a full moon cycle. And we kind of move like that. But we also can't forget that a lot of what we are learning from the moon is this idea of like, we understand what a cycle is. And if we can really understand that in nature and see that in our lives, we can translate it, not just in the sky and in nature, but into other areas of our life and understand that things take time, that we have to go through periods where we feel like we're in the dark, when we're starting from scratch, where we um, need to work and really grow our dreams. And then there's going to be times where we have all the answers we need or where we feel like there a light is really being shined onto things where we can see what works, see what doesn't work, pull back where we need to, feel like we have all of those answers. And then there's times where we start to move into the darkness, where we have to kind of let go of what we thought to let new dreams come, right? So I think 
some of it is literal and some of it is definitely and absolutely not literal. And where even though every single month since the pandemic started last year and I started doing my monthly new moon and full moon guides, even though I'm also teaching that you know, how to use the new moon for inspiration and reflection and clarity and intention setting. Those are usually the themes that I talk most about during new moons. And then the full moon cycles tend to be a little bit more around letting go, reassessing, um, surrendering, that kind of thing. I also want to be the voice of like, I guess realism, right? Like I feel like I need to kind of blow the whistle on how sometimes when the more you get into this kind of conversation in the spiritual community, especially the more overwhelming you can feel because like, as I researched um, this month's new moon, it was like every single creator. And then of course, you know, I'm on TikTok and I see a lot of astrological and kind of spiritual people talking. And it was like every other video on my For You page was like, this is your month to manifest the best abundance you've ever had. Um, This is where you're going to pull in wealth. This is where you're going to do this and that. And, and it is overwhelming. Like I'll just speak for myself. I felt so overwhelmed because leading up to this new moon, it was like Thursday, Friday that I started to see all this stuff. I'm coming off of being super sick. I'm behind in my business. I am exhausted. I'm still having trouble, you know, just spending three, four hours sitting up at my desk trying to get stuff done that I have to, but like my eyes feel tired. I feel tired. And I'm just thinking like, how on earth is this going to be the month where I manifest anything substantial? right? And that's part of why I really wrote in my new moon guide that I released, like, and that's what I'm going to be talking the majority of today about is manifestation does not have to look the way that other people tell you it looks. And I'm going to dive more into that. But I just want to be that voice of caution that's like, Every you're going to hear this like more and more often now because you know, you know why? Because it gets clicks because everybody wants a magical, you know, portal to open and suddenly they're going to bring more wealth into their life. Everybody wants to be told this is the month for the most powerful blah, blah, blah. And that's not to say that aren't real alignments happening in the sky or with the lunar cycle, that really could be wonderful, energetic momentum for you to manifest things in your life. But is every single one that comes along going to be your, you know, boat to manifest? I don't believe that's the case. And I think we would be silly to think that. I also think that if you took every time they said that this was going to be the one or that I say like, this is going to be a great time to manifest, that if you believed that every single time that you would end up exhausted and you probably would feel like some of the stuff in your life you're manifesting, but some of those big hearts desires are still trying to come through and you'd probably start to feel doubt in the process. And that is what I do not want for you. And I don't want that for myself either, which is why I think it is such an important time to be having this conversation. So let's take a quick break and then we will come back and really dive into how to manifest, when to manifest, what that actually looks like, and how you can hold space for yourself throughout the entire year and not get overwhelmed. Okay, so just a quick recap. We had this new moon um, that lined up perfectly with this Lionsgate portal and the entire spiritual community is saying, this is the one that you're going to start to manifest your wildest dreams. Like this is the one where you're going to start manifesting your wealth and your success and whatever you want, you can have it. And 
you know, there's so many amazing spiritual teachers out there who talk specifically about manifestation. So from a psychological perspective, like a psychological definition, the idea of manifesting is that you align your energy with your beliefs and what you want to come true. If you believe in it enough, you can bring it into your life through the law of attraction, through working towards it via being aligned. And is there, are there wonderful stories about this? Absolutely. Do I feel like I have manifested things in my life? Yes, absolutely. But is that also a little bit of a nice story to spin to somebody else to make it sound like a little bit more magical than it is? Yes, it is. And is everybody out there teaching this the manifestation and how powerful manifestation also talking about the things in their life that have not come to fruition? No, they're not talking about those things. And so what I want to kind of hold space for is that I do think that the idea of setting intentions and clarity and manifestation is a very important tool that you can use in your life. I also believe that if you know what you want and you are clear about those things that you don't ever have to use the word manifestation or even intention setting, that you don't have to do rituals surrounding this kind of thing in order to see the fruition of your hard work, because that's what it really comes down to, right? You can be at any place in your life and start to focus on what you know you want ahead of you and when you know what you want you start working towards it sometimes it happens very quickly sometimes it takes you on a journey and I think some of that has to do with you know divine timing and also the readiness that you feel inside of yourself And one thing I want to caution, I just, I have to say this because I I just said like that readiness is that it is not your fault if you're not ready. Um, The reason I say that is because sometimes there's a huge sense of self-hatred or self-condemnation that comes from not manifesting what you want. So a very easy example for everyone to understand is let's say that you have come to a place in your life where you really want to fall in love. Like you are ready to fall in love. You want companionship. You, you're, you're on the hunt, right? Like you're saying you're giving yourself the green light. So you get on dating apps and you start dating around and essentially, right? Like if it, if everything worked out just so perfectly, it's like, are you ready? Great. Green light. Meet your person boom, maybe you're married a couple of months or years later. Does that happen for people? Yes, all the time. But are there plenty of people who want it so bad and yet they cannot find the right people and they keep trying, but it's not working out? And does that mean that they are not ready? No, it does not mean they're not ready. Does it, but... If you ask those people four or five years from now, looking back and asking themselves, were you ready then? I think a lot of those people are at least strong in my own experience. I could say that those times in my life where I wanted love and yet it wasn't working out, I could say I was so ready, but I needed to learn so much more about myself. And that took time for me to actually get to the place where I found love the way that I was meant to. It took me a really long time. Still feel still feel like I'm figuring that out a lot of the time. So the reason so that's why I say that like you can be super ready and yet you can still have more to expand into and that is not your fault. And that's another thing that I feel like just is so common in this um this culture around manifestation is like, well, if you aren't getting it, it's because you're not in alignment. <laughs> And I just have to kind of roll my eyes. I know you can hear how annoyed I sound by that in my voice because even if there is a granule of truth to that, 
it is so dismissive of the fact that like you are doing the best that you can and you're where you are meant to be. So that's why I think it's so important to try to take as much of being result oriented around manifestation out of it and instead really put yourself more in the process of the striving towards what you want. Because if you are willing to work toward it, it will happen how it's supposed to happen. And if you can let go of when you're going to receive that, it is much easier to stay in a place of positivity, um, a place of where you're actually, I guess, in alignment, where you are feeling like you're working towards your dreams, that you are in, you're probably starting to get some of those, you're setting the kind of boundaries that help protect you, that keep you in that space where you're able to move forward instead of combating all of the obstacles that keep you from what you want. Um, so I think it keeps you in that better place of mind where like, are you more likely to get what you've been wanting and dreaming of? Probably. So I, I just want you to remember kind of this spiel whenever it comes time for either those new moons or those, you know, solar eclipses, certain times of year where we're really talking about all of these topics And I want you to think about it, see if we can shift our perspective on this. So it doesn't matter if somebody in a, you know, article online that is like a clickbait article in your newsfeed or whether it's me coming into your inbox and telling you, you can find yourself in a cycle of manifestation at any point of the year, whether it's a great time for it or whether nobody's talking about it, right? Like there is no one time that you can work or set intentions, right? So one of why one of our favorite places to set intentions is on our yoga mat because we can do it each and every day. And those intentions can last for the duration of the practice. They could last for the rest of the day. They could be for the afternoon. They could be for the entire week, the month, the year. It doesn't matter. It's up to us. And That is what I want you to remember first and foremost. So if you end up in a place where everyone's saying manifest, 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 and you're like, I, I'm not capable of that right now. You take the pressure off and there are things that you can always do to align yourself with the spirit of manifestation. And I think the first and one of the most important pieces is to return to the blank slate. So how do you do that? Like, and the reason I say that is it's the what the most fundamental part, right? You can't create a painting if every time you try to create, you know, your vision, you're taking old canvases that have already have, you know, pieces of art on them, and you're trying to recreate the picture from those things, right? So actually allowing yourself to move to a place where you can remove the distractions, where you can create a blank space inside of your heart, where you can kind of cleanse your palate, where you can let go, surrender, move into the darkness, right? From here, in the quiet and in the calm, you can start to tune into what it is that you need next. And that might be Again, something on a smaller scale, like I need a little bit more space this week. So my intention becomes space. And then when my phone doesn't ring, maybe that's me manifesting that. But guess what? That phone might ring. And that doesn't mean that I'm doing a bad job at manifesting. So when I choose not to look at my phone for two hours in the afternoon, and then I move back to it and deal with those phone calls after that, that is me manifesting space in my life. And we don't even have to call it manifesting, right? That is me deciding what I want and making space for it and doing it. Um, And then when I look back over the course of the week, if I use that time how I needed to for my soul, I can say, yeah, I proved that. I manifested that. I created that in my life right? Because that's really what manifestation is about. It's about creating something or proving it or having it come to fruition. 
Um, so that's a smaller example. It could also be something bigger, like I want to manifest a week long vacation where I, um, get a chance to sit on the beach and go to my favorite restaurants and enjoy. And so what do I have to do to start to manifest that? Do I just enter contests on vacations, sweepstakes? No, that's probably not right. How I start to do that is I really start to start with that blank slate, right? Where do I want to go? What sounds good to me? How much is that going to cost me? Okay, what are some of the things that I can do in my life to bring in that extra money so that I can have that dream trip? Or how can I save for it? Or how can I um, save up some time so that I can take that trip, right? Some things might have to come together that you're not quite sure about. Maybe it is, it ends up being like your work situation changes and then suddenly you have a three-week gap and all, all of a sudden the pieces are there, Um Or it might be something that just feels very straightforward and logical. It's like, okay, I know where I want to go. And now it's just a matter of picking the dates and actually putting it on the books and moving towards it. Um, So again, some of not everything we talk about with manifestation has to be this magical process where something comes from nothing because really it doesn't ever Yes, a lot of the stories that you'll hear and that are really amazing for our hearts do have this element of magic to them. But it's all about the narrative, right? If we really looked through any of the things that have in our life that have happened, we can all find the sense of magic, right? Like, I really believe that life just has that kind of serendipity to it um, if you try to find it. Like one of the things that I was just thinking about is how um, a couple years ago, Dave and I were visiting his family in upstate New York in the fall. It was late fall. And we were both like, gosh, this is so beautiful. We've got to come back. We got to try to shoot a wedding out here. Like this would be um, so amazing to be able to come back and work here and to be able to film in such a gorgeous time. And then lo and behold, Within a couple months, I had a friend of mine from Denver who was moving back to Maine. She was getting married in Maine. Um, Her wedding got postponed because of COVID, but this October, we're flying out there. Peak of fall colors, get to travel to Maine, um, and we get to live that. So does that feel a little bit magical? Absolutely. It really does. Um, So when we look back at like the things that we've wanted and we watch them come into our life, there's always a sense of magic to that. And the final thing that I'll share with you guys is kind of what happened to me this weekend. So I had decided on Thursday, Friday, I was like, I am way too sick. I'm in recovery mode. I've, I'm pretty stressed out right now. Like this new moon is not going to be my new moon for the biggest manifestations ever, right? I'm going to use this as more of a time to move into the darkness and to sit with the unknown because I've got a lot of that swirling around for me. And I believe that sitting with that is also the very beginning roots of the place of manifestation, right? It's like, we can think of it as like tilling the dirt. Do you want to manifest big, beautiful, strong plants. Yes. Well, you have to start with soil that is ready. So going into the darkness and, um, on Saturday, I ended up having one of those days where everything was making me cry. Like literally anything and everything was making me cry. Um, not in like a, in horrible ways, like some good ways. Like I was reading, um, the order of events for this, this ceremony coming up. And I literally was found myself crying as I explained every single part of it. As I was reading it out loud, I could not stop crying. And I realized as, um, the day was unfolding, I'm like, this is a part of a release. I am having a release and I'm having it without trying. I didn't have to you know, carve out this space for me to do a ritual in order to have that. Now, do I believe that rituals are amazing and I am a huge advocate for them and I think it's 
amazing to carve out that time for yourself to be so intentional a thousand percent. But I know a lot of you don't have time for that every week or it's not a part of your monthly practice. So I'm just trying to speak for those of you who don't have that kind of practice. If you need a release, it will come whether you want it to or not. Whether you have carved out space for it or not, you're going to find what you need. And so I just let myself cry over everything. Just cry, cry it out. And it happened to be that later that day that I had um, scheduled a call with a friend that I haven't literally haven't talked to in like four and a half months. We've just been busy. And as we were kind of just sharing our hearts with each other, you know, she just gave me some really beautiful insights and thoughts that really made me feel like it was it was almost like somebody handed me the keys to some problems that I've been having that I was like, aha, that does feel like the way forward. Like these light bulb moments just happened. And I, I believe in that kind of magic. I believe that when you are in places in your life where you need answers or where you feel stuck or where you where things kind of feel like in a little bit of friction, I think if you're patient and you let go, that the the answers will come to you when they're supposed to. And that's where I think as a spiritual community, we can really feel into our faith into God's plan for us or whatever you believe in, like however you choose to put the word of the language into that, we can really tap into that sense of faith that we are where we're supposed to be. And I really feel like our only job is to open our heart and to be the best version of ourselves that we can be. And how we do that is we stick to our values and we choose to make decisions that align with those values. We try to be a servant to others, a servant to ourselves, to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others. And we try our best to carve out enough time to listen to the voice inside of ourself. Because I feel like that is one of the most important keys to the puzzle, to the cycle. So what do you think? Do you feel all of that like I do? Um, I hope that in some ways this has been somewhat comforting. That was the biggest thing that I wanted to be able to offer today is the sense of comfort around the process of manifestation and that you're not doing it wrong if you're not feeling like you're in the best place to do it and you're not doing it wrong if you're not getting everything that you said you wanted just slow down take the pressure off start there and see what happens um let's go ahead and wrap up today's episode with a card reading i've got the wild offering oracle here by tasha silver and we will just shuffle these cards and see see what the universe has to share with us too contentment You can learn to rest in what you already have and already are. Suddenly you remember, I'm right here resting in God. I wish you could see my face. Like, if that is not the most perfect card to summarize this episode, then I don't know what is. (sighs) Yep, nothing else has to be said after that. So... I hope that you will join me next week for another new episode. Um, I will be, my plan is to record after I come home from Chicago next week. So um, hopefully I'll have some adventures to share with you and um, be able to offer a little bit more from within. So in the meantime, if you want to check out other episodes, if you want to share this episode with somebody else that you know, or um, share their, share the word of what I'm doing with a friend, you know, I always appreciate that. And until next time. <laughs>